why Sparta keeps shaking, Elisa? Yeah, this is the third earthquake that they've felt in just three weeks. Southwestern Iceland has seen 17,000 earthquakes over the past week, according to the Icelandic Meteorological Office. Sound like a lot? It is a lot. One resident told CNN that it's very unusual to feel the earth shake 24 hours a day for a whole week. And while scientists don't know exactly what's caused this swarm of quakes, a University of Iceland volcanology professor thinks they might be because there's been a quote, intrusion of magma into the Earth's crust in southwest Iceland. This is where several volcanoes are located. A tsunami warning for New Zealand has been extended after three powerful earthquakes struck the country earlier this morning. The quake struck in darkness, triggering evacuations and tsunami warnings as far away as Norfolk Island and Hawaii. It's hard not to feel like our country is having a run of bad luck when you have an earthquake, tsunami alert and pandemic to contend with all in one day. The first earthquake hit off New Zealand's northeast coast around 2.30am local time, followed by two more. This is John Risto with warning people not to take the tsunami warning lightly. The surges have sort of been compressing, and if you can see this sort of gap in here behind me, Wewiki Passage, um, there's been water accelerating and surging through there and then sucking back out again, so it's sort of been uh, constant. You may have woken up to a shaking house, perhaps, due to a 2.3 magnitude earthquake. It occurred just after 6 o'clock this morning. Yeah, a bit of a rude awakening for many. Many across the Salt Lake Valley took to social media. To University of Utah seismologist Jim Peshman says Sunday's earthquake was just one of more than 2,500 aftershocks since the Magna earthquake last year. So yes, we still do have aftershocks going on. He says the aftershocks have ranged from magnitude 0.5 to 4.6. 40 of them have been magnitude 3 and larger, and there's been 117 of magnitude 2.3 and larger. So the comparable to or larger than uh, the aftershock this morning. I've been here 29 years in, in Utah and in, in Magna, and I've, you know, up until last year, never had any experience with an earthquake. With the thousands of aftershocks since last year, many are worried the Salt Lake Valley's fault lines are more active than normal. Fox 13's Diego Romo spoke with a seismologist at the University of Utah who says it was one of thousands of aftershocks from last year's quake. I think it was like 6.01 and I, I felt this, this roll kind of come across and the, I mean it only lasted probably two or three seconds maybe, I don't know, it seemed like it lasted longer. And although Sunday's quake pales in comparison to the 5.7 magnitude tremor that rocked the Salt Lake Valley almost one year ago, Taylor says it was still a shocking experience. You kind of get used to them, but now it's been a few months since we've had any any shakes and so this was kind of a, uh, you know, a startler this morning, kind of kind of a get your heart pumping, heart pounding. And no reports of damage or injuries in Sparta after another earthquake shook this city yesterday, this time a 2.2 magnitude one with 30 people reporting the shakes. It felt like a uh truck had backed into the building actually is what it felt like uh, and that proceeded by a, uh, a loud boom like and it really just shook the whole building up here. That's Sparta Mayor Wes Brinegar describing Thursday's 2.2 magnitude earthquake, the city's third quake in just one month. They've been feeling many smaller shakes after a big earthquake struck last August. The 5.1 magnitude was one of the strongest earthquakes to hit North Carolina in 100 years. A bit of breaking news overnight, some kind of earthquake situation in West Hartford. I thought that was a mistake, but you're looking into well, it. What did you look? feel that rumbling overnight? It was not a bad dream. The U.S. Geological Survey says a 1.9 magnitude earthquake shook the central part of our state. So just kind of interesting to know that the ground is still alive underneath us. It's something to, to, that we need to be reminded of once in a while. 6.3 magnitude earthquake hit Greece today, strong enough that it was felt in the capitals of Albania, North Macedonia, Kosovo, and Montenegro. So far, there have not been any reports of injuries, just some structural damage to old homes. Central Greece was rocked by a powerful earthquake that sent people into a panic. 
a worker at a clothing store in Larissa ran for cover when the racks of clothes started swaying back and forth. The European Mediterranean Seismological Center says the quake registered as a magnitude 6.2. A homeowner captured video of her chandeliers swinging from the motion. Seismologists say the tremor was felt across the country and in neighboring. Some of you may have seen this. A very bright meteor known as a fireball was captured on doorbell cameras across the country last night. There we go. Uh, the meteor was spotted shortly before 10 p.m., visible for around seven seconds. It was captured on doorbell and security cameras in Manchester, Cardiff, Bath, and Milton Keynes. Oh, yeah, wowzers. I'm going to check mine, because it might have been over Chester, but it was over Manchester, mightn't it? That's quite impressive, that, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, I could watch them for hours. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, a mystery overnight from Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield. He thinks he saw a UFO, and he's not the only one. His wife, Emily, apparently saw it too. Baker took to Twitter just before midnight saying that he saw a, quote, very bright ball of light going straight down out of the sky. He said it happened near Lake Travis in Austin when he and his wife were heading home after dinner. 20 minutes later, Emily followed saying, what was that in Austin, Texas? Emily also said she was a bit thrown off and that she's not typically into UFO talk, but all she knows is she saw something that she's never seen. They were in Texas coming home from dinner and that's what they thought. Caught my attention. It also caught the attention of our favorite observationist here at What's New, Mike Polk. So, as we expect, <laughs> Mike attempts to interpret, and that's the words, attempts to interpret what these UFOs could mean for Baker Mayfield and his future with the Cleveland Browns. In a strange incident, several people in Punjab's Rudhyana claimed that they saw an unidentified flying object in the sky. The shiny, unidentified object became a source of intrigue and excitement for many as residents captured videos of it and shared it on social media. video that went viral, an object with shiny lights can be seen. However, there is no concrete evidence of it being a UFO or an alien. UFO and alien conspiracies have been around forever, so whether you're a believer or skeptic, we're one step closer to finding out the truth. The Pentagon has months to release everything they know, and we spoke to some experts about it. And they only have a few months left, so what else do you think they will share with us? As little as they can, there will be a, an unclassified version of their report and also a classified version which we will not see and that's that's the one we would be interested in yeah I, I don't understand why they wouldn't release that information i just watched a documentary about how presidents throughout history wanted to get this information out what politician is going to go before the american people and make such a pronouncement and still get reelected? best interview we did all year i know <laughs> no really it's fast I think I'm just kidding. No, hey, no. more and more we're gonna learn, you know, the government's already said that they're gonna start leaking out information. So You're with me on this. Of course I am. And you're ahead of the curve, bud. I'll meet you, you know? up I'll meet you up there. Mount Etna in the Italian region of Sicily has been erupting for two weeks straight. This isn't so unusual for Etna, which is Europe's most active volcano and almost always in some state of eruption, but this series of blasts, which began in late February, have been particularly stunning. 
wowing scientists and observers around the world. Many of the eruptions have occurred overnight, lighting up the sky with red ash clouds and oozing rivers of lava. An iceberg the size of Greater London has broken away from the Antarctic. The split was detected just 20 kilometers from Britain's Halley Research Station on the Brunt Ice Shelf. Scientists who've been predicting such uh, an event for months say they'll use satellite images to track the iceberg and to monitor instabilities. Friday, February 26, a huge iceberg larger than the size of New York City broke off of the main ice shelf, which happens to be almost 500 feet thick. Again, however, this did not come as a surprise to the scientists. Here you can see that crack in that 500 foot ice shelf. I think it's the size and scale that kind of is mind blowing for all of us. Oh. <laughs> it really puts it in perspective. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Thank you so much.